Well, good morning, third graders. Especially want to shout out to Miriam as we continue to review uh, these different forms of measurement. Today's lesson is 10.8, and you'll find that on page 605 of your math textbook. And today we're going to talk about estimating and measuring mass. And mass, loosely defined, relates to the weight of things. Something with more mass is heavier than something with less mass. We talked a little bit about that yesterday. On page 605, it shows you a couple of metric measurements for mass. And those standard metric measurements are the gram. And one gram weighs about as much as this paper clip. And it shows you a picture in the book there. And, you know, it's like anything else. You don't really understand something until you have had some experience to reference it to. And, and I'm always surprised to discover, even in some grown-ups, uh, that don't understand some simple things because they've never, they've never experienced it. So they never learned it. It never got into their, their memories. And it's pretty much what we're doing here for you guys is we're trying to give you some of those experiences so you have those reference points locked away in your memories in case you ever have to use this. So you can't know what a gram feels like until you felt one. So, you know, get a paper clip. Feel what it is. It's pretty light. As a matter of fact, it's real light. And so the unit of measure grams in the metric system would be used for measuring things that are fairly light, you know, like a feather or a paper clip. On the other hand, they also reference the kilogram. And a kilogram would be like if you took 1,000 of these paper clips, put them all together in a pile. That's the difference between a single gram and a kilogram. A kilogram would weigh as much as 1,000 of these. And that's one of the nice things about the metric system is everything's in measurements of 10. And it makes it so easy to figure out from one measurement range to another. Looking at the activities, now, in order to measure mass, you need a scale. That's typically what we use to measure mass. And here's an example of a scale. When it's in balance, it sits level. And right now, there's nothing on either side of this scale to cause it to tip one way or the other. So, if we take our paper clip and put it on one side, you see that the scale tips slightly in that direction. So now, when we're estimating, for example, if I say, I have this marker here, is it heavier or lighter than a gram? So if I set that marker onto this scale, what happens? Well, I can't even get it to stay there. There we go. Well, you saw that it tipped very dramatically in the other direction, which tells me this is much heavier than this. So this marker has greater mass than this paper clip. On the other hand, 
Let me find something else here. Let's just take the lid. and put it on one side of the scale, and you see the scale tips slightly in the direction that I have that on. And let's put the paper clip on there. Now, because it didn't go back to level, it's telling me even just the lid off of this marker has a greater mass than one gram. Now, let me get something else here. I'll be right back. What I did is I went and picked up a couple more paper clips. Now we have three paper clips. So now we can get serious about measuring something here. We know that one paper clip is equal to about one gram. So I'm going to put that one paper clip on the scale. And then I'm going to add the lid. And you saw right away that it dropped to the other side. So if I add another paper clip, my scale oh, just slightly tipped the other way. So it's telling me that this lid, this little cap here, is pretty close to weighing two grams because I have two paper clips balancing out the scale. Now, that's pretty much what this is all about, is being able to understand what a gram is and then determine different objects, whether or not they would be best described as weighing and being measured using grams or if it's something bigger and heavier, then we would use the measurement kilogram. Let's turn the page. Let's go on to page 606 at the bottom of the page there. Now on the bottom of the page, it shows you a scale much like the one I have here. And on that scale, they have one kilogram weight on one side and then it looks like five bananas on the other side. Now you've picked up a bunch of bananas so you kind of have that point of reference in your memory about how much a bunch of bananas feels like when you pick it up. Well that's pretty much what a kilogram feels like. So now you've got a reference. Kilogram, one kilogram, or a thousand paper clips, weighs about the same as a half a dozen bananas and a bunch of bananas. So looking on page 607 now, let's look at these objects they have there and Let's work through some of these and see if we can't figure out whether they're related to the gram or something heavier related to the kilogram. Choose the unit you would use to measure the mass. Well, the first thing they show you is a strawberry. And that strawberry was about the size of the cap off of my marker here. So we used the gram to measure the weight and the mass of that cap. So I would say you would use a gram to measure that. On the other hand, if I put a dog on my scale, 
it would take a whole, whole lot of paper clips to balance out that scale against the weight of the dog. So I would probably want to use a heavier mass like the kilogram. Number four, compare the masses of these objects and write is less than, the same as, or more than. So here we're going to be doing comparison. And we're looking at a bowling pin and a piece from a chessboard game. Now, unless you've held a bowling pin in your hand, you don't know how heavy that is. But you can imagine a bowling pin is a lot bigger than a little piece from a chess game. So, I would say the mass of the bowling pin is greater than the mass of the chess piece. Number five, here we have the mass of erasers and clips. And it shows two erasers and then five clips. And it shows the scale being in balance, not tilted one way or the other, but actually being in balance. So I would have to say the mass of the erasers, because it is in balance, is equal to the mass of those five paper clips. Starting to make sense to you? Now, there's some more examples here. Number six is choose the unit you would use to measure the mass. Now, there's a desk like you have in school, and you know it would take a whole lot of paper clips at one gram each to balance out the weight of that desk. So you'd be using kilograms for that. But on the other hand, a pair of sunglasses, they're not so heavy. So you might be able to do that pretty easily with some paper clips or the measurement of a gram. On the other hand, though, a watermelon. Now, I know you've picked up a watermelon. You know they're heavy. So you wouldn't be using paper clips to measure that. You wouldn't be using grams. You would use the kilogram. 9 and 10, again, they're doing comparisons. The mass of a pen and the mass of four paper clips. In that picture, the scale is in balance again. They're equal. So that means that the mass of the pen is equal to the mass of four paper clips. So that pin must weigh about four grams because it had four paper clips at about one gram each. Number 10, here we have a scale that's clearly out of balance and it shows some wooden blocks on one side and plastic straws on the other. And you can see that the blocks are heavier so the mass of the straws is definitely less than the mass of those blocks. On page 608, it shows you a variety of different objects there. You got a golf ball, a tennis table ball, but well, that's ping pong ball, a bowling ball, a tennis ball, and a baseball. And it wants you to start thinking about the the difference in relationship to one another, whether one is heavier, one is lighter, whether it would be grams or kilograms in the measurement. Now, a golf ball, if you haven't picked up a golf ball, you don't have much sense of what a golf ball feels like in its mass. So if you got a golf ball somewhere, pick it up. Is it heavy? Is it light? Same thing with a ping pong ball. Now, if you've never picked up a ping pong ball, you don't know just how light that is. It hardly weighs anything. But then a baseball, which is tightly wound, solid, that has a little more weight. A tennis ball, on the other hand, is hollow. So it's not as heavy as a baseball. And then you got the bowling ball, and I'll tell you what, if you can't figure out that a bowling ball is heavier than all of those things, and probably all of those things put together, 
then we got a bigger problem. You need to go pick up a bowling ball because a bowling ball typically can weigh anywhere from 12 to 13 US pounds. So it's going to have to be measured with the metric system using kilograms. Even the baseball is getting close to being measured by kilogram. But the tennis ball, the golf ball, the ping pong ball, those all can be weighed in grams. Even the baseball, depending, you know, because there's different kinds of baseballs. That baseball there looks like a softball, which would be, you know, about that big around. And they're solid and they're pretty heavy. So learning to estimate the relationship. So I would say if you had to guess, you would guess that the golf ball probably weighs as much as maybe 20 to 30 grams, about the same weight as 20 to 30 paper clips. Whereas the tennis ball, uh, the table tennis ball, the ping pong ball, you could probably balance that scale off with three or four grams, maybe less. They're pretty light. The baseball would take some more. You might have to, you might have to have a pretty good pile of paper clips to balance the baseball, but it's probably more accurate than trying to measure it as a part of a kilogram. The tennis ball, pretty much the same. It would, it would be something you'd measure using grams. But that bowling ball, definitely, you would have to use kilograms because you'd have a mountain of paper clips before that scale actually balanced itself. <clears throat> Looking at problem number 16, I like to think smarter ones because it does. It makes you have to think a little bit. So this is where you got to apply a little bit of thought. Select the objects with a mass greater than one kilogram. Now, mind you, it's saying greater than one kilogram. We know a kilogram is a thousand paper clips. So, when you look at these examples they give here, which ones do you think would weigh more than a pile of a thousand paper clips? A skateboard? Yeah, I would think. A laptop computer? Sure. That's going to weigh more. A cell phone? Eh, probably not. An egg? Absolutely would not weigh a kilogram. A desk, however, is going to weigh many kilograms. And the pencil, no, you'd want to measure that using grams. A pencil might require 10 or 15 paper clips to balance it off on the schedule. Now, as you work through the homework on 609 and 610, you just need to apply those principles. And it should be pretty easy for you. But again, you know, you can't know something you've never experienced. So if you don't know what a golf ball weighs, try and find a golf ball and hold it for a minute and kind of lock that into your memory. Well, that's how much a golf ball weighs. A bowling ball, if there happens to be one of those tucked in the back of your closet somewhere. All right, third graders, <clears throat> and especially Miriam, you know, Understanding these things, most of, most of the understanding comes from experiencing them. You know, holding a liter of water, feeling a kilo, what that weight feels like. And being able to look at a ruler and understanding what the measurements are in centimeters. So, that wraps up 
those three lessons on measurement. I hope that gives you a little better understanding of what they are, what they mean. Meanwhile, stay safe. Have a good rest of the day. Take care of yourself. And always remember, be kind to everybody. Bye now.